so I work over at Kern Medical Center. I'm a dietitian there. I work on the pediatric and uh, neonatology floor. Basically, I work with the babies and the kids. So um, that's primarily my role there. Before I worked there, I actually worked as a sports nutritionist over at Teriotherapy, where I worked with athletes all the way from junior high up to pro sports. So I spent a lot of time learning about obesity. I work with post-bariatric clients as well. There's a lot of things that I do, but most of the stuff I do related to weight management is on TV now. I actually do Wednesday mornings with Channel 23, where we talk about nutrition and wellness and things like that. So I still stay in it, but most of my work is done at the hospital now. And and I'm working with the doctors to try to get an obesity intervention program over at Sagebrush Clinic, which would be the first Medi-Cal based program that we offer for kids who are overweight in Bakersfield. We don't have a program just yet, so we're still waiting, so I'm working on it. But um, So this is really near and dear to my heart, mainly. <laughs> That's what you guys need to know. So what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to kind of challenge you a little bit and we're going to have a little bit of fun with it. So no staying quiet, except you're going to be talking to me, not to your friends. Fair enough? Okay, so we're going to talk about the evolution of fast food and how that's had an influence on obesity. And you guys are studying like heart, health, and everything else, right? Is that what you guys are working on? Yeah. Someone want to tell me an idea of what you guys have learned so far? Anyone? Anyone at all? Don't be shy. There's 36 of you in here. Seriously. <laughs> no? You guys haven't been working on anything? What are these for? Math. Math? Math? Do you guys use anything for heart rate or anything? <laughs> oh. Good teaching, Tony. <laughs> you notice when you ask what they do, they look at you. So, um, so are you guys working on like learning how heart rate affect, like how your health affects your heart rate and everything? Are you guys learning that right now? Yeah. Have you guys learned a lot about that yet? No. Okay. Have you guys learned about? <laughs> have you learned? About, uh, you've learned how to add it up, though, right? Yeah. Okay. You've done your job. <laughs> Algebra. <laughs> um, do you guys take health class here on campus? Yeah. Yeah. Freshman, freshman year. And what grade are you guys typically? Oh, okay. So if I've talked about something you've already learned, I'm sorry, but what we're going to do is talk about how fast food trends have influenced the obesity uh, crisis that we're in today. It's not the only cause; it's just one of the causes. But we were just wanting to talk about something that correlates to you guys. Just you guys are kind of at an age where you have to make decisions. And those decisions are going to affect your adulthood life, basically. So I mentioned the fact that um, we could talk about fast food and how media influences you guys to make decisions and how you guys actually get easily influenced, whether you want to admit it or not, um, on your choices. And so how those choices actually affect your health later on. Sound fun? So fun. Come on, you know you're excited. <laughs> okay, so this is a really interactive um, presentation, I think. I'm not clicking. <laughs> I'll use the side arrows. Uh, okay, so what do you think about this? If you can see it. So it's a like way to play virtual hot scotch. <laughs> eating chips, drinking a soda. It's sunny outside. Just tell me what you think. Opinions. I want opinions. Sadly. Absurd, not absurd, I don't care. Lazy. 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 She's not lazy, she's like a video game. Do what? Does she favorite version? Your version? So you can relate to the situation. Yes. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> does it does it make you uncomfortable to see this? Yeah. yeah. A little bit. What makes you uncomfortable about it? <laughs> so you guys know that activity is a good thing. There might be. Don't put this on YouTube, please. Okay. Um, so we know something's wrong with this, right? We know that she should probably be more active. We know if she's playing hopscotch, it should probably be outdoors. <laughs> okay, that's fine. What do you think about this one? Sorry, it's a video clip, so it's a little fuzzy. I had to freeze frame it. So just look at this. Tell me what you think. Don't Obviously, don't offend anyone by saying bad names, but just what, what do you think? Why is it not good? What is it that's not right? You can't even reach a soda. Okay. Whatever Does he seem like he has short limbs? Oh, yeah. yeah. You notice he's unhealthy. He's very unhealthy looking, right? Yeah. I never want to say someone's unhealthy just by appearance, but yeah, for the most part, he's pretty unhealthy. Is that a normal size for a child? No. no. Okay. What about his food he's eating? No. Is that a kid's happy meal? He needs no. to share. No. He needs to share with how many people, though? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Does it make you uncomfortable to see this one? Yeah. A little bit? 
Does it, make, it makes me sad. It grieves my heart because he didn't decide that for himself. Someone influenced that. Know what I mean? Some genetics, definitely. Okay. What about this one? This one's fuzzy, too, because it's a video as well. I couldn't find any good pictures. We're just slightly overweight, a little bit of weight here. <coughs> Two girls. They're active. They're outdoors, right? Does that make you uncomfortable? Not so much. Not so much? Why is that? There's, th there's no right or wrong here, truly. I just randomly picked pictures that I thought we could talk about. Are you concerned about those girls at all? No. If you're thinking about it in the aspect of activity, are you concerned about them? No. No. Yeah, yeah why? What about their uh, lifestyles? So they have weight. Something's not right, but is it? we're comfortable with this, right? This is normal, right? Would you say this is somewhat normal? Yeah. Somewhat, huh? I'm going to say this is somewhat normal because this is what our kids look like today. Sorry if I'm talking about anyone who may feel uncomfortable about this, but the fact is I'm actually concerned about this. Why would I be concerned about this? <laughs> what have you guys learned about weight in the abdomen area? Do you guys know? It's unhealthy, right? Do you know she's at higher risk for diabetes than the other kid? Because when you have your weight here in your abdomen, um, all the fat that's stored here is around your organs versus all over the body where it's subcutaneous under the skin. So there's a difference in the way fat's stored. So you guys are talking about heart rate and you're talking about heart disease. The more weight you have here affects you a lot more than total overall body weight. So this, these two girls would actually be somewhere I'm concerned about their hormone levels as teens. I'm concerned about diabetes and I'm concerned about what's going to happen later when they have kids. Okay? So I'm actually more concerned about them than I am about these two. Mind you, I'm worried about these for different reasons. But here, genetics is playing a role because he has short stature. Something's developmentally delayed there. But he's also not being <coughs> managed well by his parents. His parents are letting him choose what he wants, apparently, if you were assuming based on that picture, right? That could have been staged, by the way, so don't think that kid was eating that. All right. So I just want to talk about how fast food can influence that because it definitely does. Research has shown significantly that fast food has an impact on our weight and I'll talk about how that is and how you guys can do something about it. Um, back in the 20s they started what's called speedy service and it evolved into McDonald's creating the first ever um, speedy service takeout. Uh, they didn't want people to stay so they actually created uncomfortable seating and everything was outdoors. There was nothing indoors like what we see now. So it was basically a walk up to a counter, get your food and go. And so it was created in 1937. What did they serve back then? Do you guys know? Burgers, fries. There's one other thing, not even milkshakes yet. Sodas. Sodas, fries and hamburgers, that's it. And everything was made the same way. There was no have it your way, which comes much later. Okay, so Carl saw the trend, saw how cool that was, and said, you know what, we're going to do the same thing. In 1945, they started popping up everywhere. And Carl's Jr. actually had other restaurants. That's why it's called Jr. Because Carl, the owner of Carl's Jr., actually had other kind of quick stop restaurants as well throughout California. Most of this started in California, just so you know. Thank you for the highway, because <laughs> everyone was in their car. Um, it was a lot different environment on the East Coast at this time. So then in and out Taco Bell, basically through the years from the 1940s all the way up to the 1950s, we started seeing these fast food chains pop up. They were not very common practice because the hamburger was actually considered to be um, poor man's food. So it wasn't something that uh, traditional families would go and eat. So there, it wasn't a popular trend at the time. So we didn't see a significant increase in food intake until later. So the fast food trends, um, soda consumption increased over the 50s due to the 50s um, just the stop and go, grab your food and go. Kids were very uh, excited about that because they had more control of their choices. So they actually would be able to pick up hamburger fries sodas and the parents started taking them there because it was affordable. And when you have a large family, it got really easy to purchase this food and to be able to feed a whole family. Um, the order it your way became a trend. And that was something that kind of started coming up and Burger King did uh, start that. So it was actually a unique trend and that it wasn't being done that way before. So the order at your way started in about the 50s to 60s, and then in the 70s they started creating alternatives because the burgers weren't enough. And so they started experimenting with uh, chicken nuggets. Some people had salads, but not very many. So it just kind of evolved. Milkshakes started coming around in the 60s and 70s. So the menus kind of expanded. Uh, there still wasn't a lot of marketing because TV was still a newer thing, and not all families had a TV. But in the 70s that changed.